So I came up with this design a few years ago now because I needed a dining table which I can build and sell that flat packs really small so that I can ship it all over the world which really broadened my clientele. So until today I'm yet to build this design as a coffee table and I'm really excited because it's one of those projects that's great for all types of woodworkers. It's simple enough for the beginner woodworker to take on to really kind of push the limits. Like I made this prototype out of two by fours literally just on my table saw. But it also can be technical enough, I guess, for the advanced woodworker to really enjoy and get their teeth stuck into it and kind of put their own spin on it. Now, as you can see, I'm making today's coffee table out of rough sawn walnut. And I like to start off all my projects by breaking down my material roughly oversized to all the components that I need. I then continue to mill up my material to just over one and a half inches or 65 millimeters in thickness. So now all my lumber is all milled up, I'm going to go ahead and put aside my material for the base and make a brief start on the top. So as I don't have a really wide slab of walnut to overcome that, I'm going to be laminating a few pieces together. To do that, I'm going to rip down the pieces that I selected for the top to equal widths on my table saw. So with that done, I can go ahead and arrange my pieces until I'm happy with how it looks on the top there. And I'm also going to add some dominoes in the seams to help with alignment. And then next I can glue the seams together with some wood glue. And then clamp it down nice and flat and let it dry for a few hours. Now meanwhile, while I'm waiting for this to dry, I can use that time to make a start on the base. So where I live, it's really hard for me to get real thick, solid walnut, which is why I opted for material as wide as I can get it for the base. So that way I can rip this in half on my table saw and then book match my pieces together. That way it kind of looks like one solid piece. So you can see here that the two pieces, the grain kind of mirrors each other. Now that's pretty damn convincing. So now all I'm gonna do is add some dominoes for alignment and then glue these pieces together. Okay, so it's the very next day and all my glued parts have now dried, so I can go ahead and take everything out of the clamps. And then I can give the top a really good sand to get it nice and flat and remove any of the ridges. Now obviously this is square and I want to make it into a circle shaped top. So there's many ways for me to cut out a perfect circle on this tabletop. And today I'm opting for a router and this cool circle jig that I made. Now this is very basic and I made it on my CNC out of some hardwood flooring material which is perfect for this jig because it's flat, it's durable, and it's thin. So I get the most out of my router bit. Now this is very basic and you don't need a CNC to make one of these. You just need a thin piece of wood to which you can connect your router to at one end. Now make a mark from the edge of the router bit at half the distance of the circle that you want to cut out. So for example, this round top here, I want to make it 30 inches wide. Now half of that is 15 inches. So I'll make a mark from my router bit to 15 inches. Now I already have the hole pre-drilled, but if I didn't, I will drill a small hole at that mark. Now this is all figured out. I can put it aside for a quick second and then flip the tabletop upside down so the underside is what's on top. And then can make a pencil mark dead center. And then using a small screw, I can put the screw through the hole that I chose on the jig at that mark center of the top. And now with my router and jig locked in place, dead center of my piece, the only way it can really go is in a perfect circle, which is exactly what we want. So now I can go ahead and cut out a perfect circle by dropping the router bit at about a quarter of an inch for each pass. So now that the top is cut out and it's perfectly round, I can go ahead and give it a finished sand. Give the top a slight round over to get rid of the sharpness and then a chamfer on the bottom. Okay, so the top is pretty much done. It's looking great and it's ultimately ready for finish. So I'm gonna put it aside for now and make a start on the base. Okay, so first things first, I gotta clean up all of the glue residue. And then I can go ahead and put it through the jointer to get it nice and square and then put it through the planer to get it to the thickness that I want them to be. And then I can go ahead and cut them to length on my table saw. 
And now it's time for the fun part. So in order for me to get these two kind of interlock with each other, I gotta cut a dado out in the center of each one. And then once my center line is marked out, I like to grab one of the offcuts and then use that to determine my cutout lines. And then once that's done, I can go ahead and mark the depth of my cutout, which is half the thickness of my material. Now there's many ways for me to cut out this dado. For me, I like to hog out most of my material on my table saw either using my dado stack or my table saw sled. Next, I like to clean up the sides with a sharp chisel. And then to clean up the saw marks on the bottom, I like to use my router plane. Now I love using this thing because it makes me feel like a proper woodworker. With that said, you may or may not have noticed that I put a domino in the wrong place. Now, if this was for a client, I would cut this out and plug it with a, uh, a walnut domino or even cut a whole new piece. But because this is an experiment for me and ultimately it is hidden 100% of the time once the table is assembled, I'm just gonna leave it in, but don't tell anyone. So now that the dados are cut out, next I can go ahead and put the table together. And I'm not gonna reveal just how the table goes together just yet. You'll have to wait till the end and I'll show you how that works, but you'll notice that, yes, the table is very pointy. Now I like the square ends as part of the design and it what makes the whole thing kind of look how it does. But if you've got like a really nice floor, it's gonna be sliding around and it's gonna be kind of scratchy. Plus, we gotta connect the top to this and the points. Well, they gotta go. So to overcome this, I grabbed three of these sanding discs that have a sticky back. Now I like to stick these down to my bench, roughly in the same area where the points of the base well, sit on the bench. And now I can go ahead and give it a little shimmy until I get a big enough flat spot so I can put on some felt pads on the bottom points to protect any flooring and big enough flat spots at the top so that I have enough room to connect a figure eight fixing, which is what I'm gonna use to connect the base to the top. So now I'm on the stage of the build where I can strip it all back down, give it a really, really good finished sand to get it ready to apply the finish. So for the finish today, and as always, I'm gonna be using Osmo Oil. Now, specifically for this project, I'm gonna be using Osmo Oil Poly X, the 3043 in satin. Now this is a great option for when finishing walnut because not only is it durable, it's easy to apply, but it also makes those tones and those colors really, really pop. So for this project today, I'm gonna to be applying in two ways. For the top, as it takes 95% of the abuse, I'm gonna be applying the finish using one of Osmo's microfiber rollers. Now this application is known for giving you the best, most durable finish, which makes sense for the top. So once I make sure that everything is dust free and the roller has been de-linted, I can then prime my roller. And once I'm ready, I can roll on a nice, even consistent coat, making sure to go with the grain. Now that's looking pretty damn sweet. I'm gonna make a start on the base. And as the base is pretty much sheltered from the top for ease, I'm gonna be applying the finish using a white pad. Now this is probably the easiest applicator and you simply just buff your oil in. Let it sit for a few minutes and then wipe any of the residue with a blue shop towel. So now all my components have had its first coat of oil, I'm gonna let it sit and dry overnight. Okay, so it's the very next day and all of my Osmo oil has dried on my components. So next I'm gonna give everything a really light sand with 320 grit in my orbital sander. And then I can go ahead and apply the second and final coat with a white pad, making sure to wipe off any of the residue. And once the second coat has had eight hours to dry, it's now time for the moment that everyone's been waiting for. So I figured the best way to explain how this contraption puzzle or whatever you want to call it goes together is by demonstration. So I always begin it off by placing all three of my pieces 
in the exact same way with a dado sticking up like so. Now I'm going to label them one, two, and three. Now the middle one, I want to turn 90 degrees to the right. And then again, the whole thing, 90 degrees to the left like so. So it's facing the opposite to the rest of them. Now this, number two, will sit in the groove of number one like so. Now you can see that here, I've only put it in so it's halfway across. Now that's very important because I'm going to grab number three, stick it up vertically, and then this will sit over the far side, slit on, and then basically the whole thing should then just kind of figgle and wiggle and whatever into position. And you know that you got it right because all three of my connectors are at the top. So now all I can do is connect the top and then bring it into its final rest in place. Now, if you want to try and build this table yourself and you want some detailed drawings and plans, I have those for this and the dining table version available at raddadbuilds.com. So go check them out on there. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see some more of my modern furniture builds, check out one of these up here or check out some of my major modern home renovations down here. I'm sure you'll find something that you'll like. Now I will see you guys in the next one. Yep.